Happy New Year! You got Joe Rosen here and the amazing Lizette Hurtado. And today we're going to talk about what we're guessing is going to happen in 2022 with the real estate market. And Lizette, before you start, I want to mention a couple numbers that I did some research on. Uh, it was either yesterday or the day before with Port St. Lucie specifically. I looked at single family home sales in Port St. Lucie and I looked at December over December sales, right? So I looked at uh, December of 2019. The, the average sales price versus the average sales price in December of 2020. And then I compared the 2020 to 2021. And looking at that, I saw that two years ago, the market went up 16%, right? So in 2000, what would it have been, man? 2020, it went up 16%. In 2021, it went up a whopping 33.8%. All right. Now, I know after that 16% increase, I heard from a lot of buyers. Well, it's going to slow down. I'm going to wait until the market drops a little bit, and then I'll hop back in. Uh, that'll be a much better situation. And then the market went up a third, right? So think about that. Think about a $300,000 home that goes up a third. Now it's four hundred grand. all right? So if the market drops 20%, which would be literally the second biggest drop in real estate in the last 70 years, we've had one drop over 10%, and that was 2008. If the market dropped 20%, it still would have been a bad decision not to buy in January of last year, right? Forget about all the payments that are paying down your, your equity. Just price alone, you would have purchased that three that went to four, take away 20%. Now you're at 320. You're still paying 20 grand more a year later, even though the market's receded 20%. And we have only seen that once in 70 years. So with those numbers, Lizette, what are you telling clients that you run into today when they're asking you what your best guess is for 2022? I have this conversation so often, specifically with first time home buyers, and they are on the fence and they keep saying, well, I'm going to wait till the prices go down. It's yeah. just too high right now. And I think that's such a big mistake they're making that's mm -hmm. going to end up costing them so much in the end run. We are going to see a little bit of an increase in mortgage rates. You know, it's not going to be crazy, but it's going to be up. And that's going to affect how much home you can afford. That's going to affect your payment. So in the long run, you're actually losing out more and paying more for a house that maybe you could have bought a bigger home, a little bit more expensive home and paid less on interest rates. So I can't stress it enough to my buyers. If you're on the fence and you're waiting for that crash, you're making, you know, unfortunately a big mistake, you know, get active, start looking at the properties and look at the history and we'll see how much they've increased in the past year. And they're going to keep on increasing, maybe not the same speed or intensity that we saw in the last two years, but the increase is going to keep on and also the increase of interest rates. Yeah, uh, I've seen interest rates are going to go up too. And I remember when I was selling in Minnesota, it was probably 2004, 2005. And rates, from memory, I think they were dipping below 6% for the first time. And everybody was so used to 7, 8, 9. I remember Betty Lou Berg, she'd been in like, that lady's got to be 80 years old now. She sold when <laughs> like long before me. And she said, Joe, there were 17% rates back in the day. You think it's tough now? It was tough then. And so she told us all, that we were spoiled for these 6% rates, right? And then rates went to five and then they went to four and now they're uh, hovering around three and we've even had some that are in the twos. So, you know, everything is relative and you can say, you, you know, just like gas, right? If gas goes up to $10 a gallon. I'm not going to pay for gas. It's, dude, it could go up to $15 a gallon. You're going to pay for it. Like, what are you going to do? Stay home and make no money? Does it suck? Yes. But in relativity, it is what it is, right? So rates are the same. I think you are going to likely see rates increase. I agree with you. I don't think it's going to be dramatic. I've seen rates go up and down in the past and they warn you about it. And it's generally a half a percent to a percent. If you're a buyer, you're still going to be a buyer. If you're a seller, you're still going to be a seller. It's not going to kick anybody off of the fence, right? But it is going to impact your buying power, which Lizette, to your point, I think is an incredible thing to think about, right? Um, I'm looking at Florida specifically. I saw a number from Zillow. I don't remember the exact number, but it literally listed out state by state what Zillow thought 2022 would look like for home prices. And I remember the worst state, I, it was either Wyoming or Montana, and it was right around 3%, something like that. Don't hold me to these numbers, but it was a small little increase. Uh, but every single state had an increase. And Florida was number one, and it was the only double-digit increase. It was 10 point something percent is what they were forecasting. So I will say this, and I think you'll agree with me, Lizette. 
nobody has a clue what's going on. If you asked all these realtors in 2006, 2007, what was going to happen, very few said the market's going to plummet. It's going to go down 30, 40%. Not a lot of people were saying that, right? Could it happen? Absolutely. Again, it only happened one time in 70 years where it dropped 10% for the year, but it could happen. With that in mind, what do you think is leading to Zillow's prognostication that Florida is the number one increasing state in 2022? I mean, I just take a look at what happened in 2021. How many people have come into the state? We have very tight inventory and we still have a number of people flocking from up north, moving out of the cities. I mean, just for myself traveling through the states in the last few few weeks, I appreciated Florida for the sunny weather, um, all the attractions that we have. We have beaches on each coast. We have amusement parks. We Whoa. have a booming job industry. It's We have so many positives here in Florida and people in other states see that and see that opportunity and want to get out of the cold weather and want to get out of the snow and want to get into Florida. So the demand is still there and the inventory is still very tight. Yeah. No income tax is huge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the one big thing that I'll mention is COVID. I mean, a lot of these states, New York, California, New Jersey, these are some of the states that we're seeing the most people come from. And they are, whether true or not, I mean, I'm not living in those states, I don't know, but they're perceived to be highly restricted. Florida is perceived to be fairly open. So I think that, you know, a lot of the people that I've seen coming down are people who have small businesses and they're, they're concerned, whether it's legit or not, that, hey, I do not want to be in this area. I want to be in an area where I can run my business. And that, I think, has led to a huge increase in Florida, at least for the last two years. But now I see they're starting to lighten up, you know, on the national scale. It makes me wonder is that going to, you know, create a lighten up in the in the Florida market? I don't know. We'll see. But I do think it's interesting. Um, right now, talk to me a little bit about inventory. What does inventory look like if I'm a buyer? Are there a lot of homes, not a lot of homes, and what's that sweet spot in the Port St. Lucie market? I think right now what we've seen is a little bit of a change from the summer. The summer we were extremely tight on inventory. It, it was rough for, to be a buyer and be on the buyer side. Um, we have options <laughs> we have houses on the market but overall consensus we still have a very tight inventory um so if you are a buyer you unfortunately don't have a ton of options either at the moment um and that is not forecasted to change much either yeah yeah i, I agree with you I'm, I'm seeing that i think that if you're a buyer who can only look on saturdays and sundays it's tough but for the folks that will literally go out right now or that trust me enough to say, hey, Joe, you go out, you take a video, and I'll make a decision based on that. Um, there are still options. I mean, there are only a handful of options that are going to fit what you want, but half of them are going to sell tomorrow, and you're going to get a whole handful of new options, right? The, the thing is, the trick is you got to be quick. You got to be willing to move now. You got to be pre approved. You got to know what you're going to offer, and you got to come in strong. So, for the people who are proactive, if you can wait a week, two weeks, three weeks, you're going to get a lot more options than what you're seeing right now. Uh, so Bill Rosen, I love the last name, brother. Uh, he mentioned, how do you see rental prices affecting home buyers? Lizette, I'll let you start with that. Um, I have a rental coming up very soon. And the nice thing is when you compare it to all the other cities and when you compare the people coming into it, it's still very affordable. You're still going to get a lot more money a lot more house for your money that you would in the other cities such as West Palm or Miami. Oh, yeah. But yeah, rental prices have gone up. So then what do I tell my, my renters? If you could buy, if you could weigh in and get, if you need to fix your credit, it takes a couple months, you need to save a couple extra thousand dollars, take that time and you know sit tight and get yourself in a position where you could buy. Because why spend all this money on rentals when they're so expensive at the moment? Yeah, and, and if you look at your options, if you've got a 580 credit score, you could argue worse. You can get a loan with a worse credit score, but mm -hmm. 580 is kind of where the decent loans start. Uh, and you've got even a little bit of cash to put down on a home, right? A few thousand dollars. You are going to have a smaller payment 95% of the time buying than you will renting, right? Because if Lizette goes out and she buys a home to rent it out, she now has a payment. Oh, by the way, her payment's probably worse than it would be if it was my primary home because a secondary home for investment, not as nice a rates, right? So that higher payment for Lizette, when she goes to rent it out to somebody else, 
is going to be even higher. She needs to cash flow maybe $100, $200, $300 a month. So when you rent, you're actually paying more per month and there's nothing going into paying down your equity. You go buy a $400,000 home right now and at the end of the year, let's say the market does nothing. It does nothing. Your $400,000 home is still worth four hundred. dollars You've probably paid off maybe eight, ten thousand dollars on that home throughout the year. So now it's worth four hundred. Same thing, didn't go up at all, but you only owe maybe three ninety two or three ninety, something like that. So I'm seeing rent prices. I mean, I just looked up for a guy. You know, two years ago, you could get into a rental for twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars here in Port St. Lucie. I just had a guy ask me to look up on the MLS how many options were available. I looked it up and in Port St. Lucie there were 72, 76, it was 70 something uh, rental options available, right? No criteria, just Port St. Lucie rental, 70 something. When I punched in 1800 as a max, and remember I said 12, 13, 1400, you could do that a couple years ago. 1800 as a max, there were three, Mm -hmm. there were three. Two of them were condos, which a lot of people don't even wanna consider, right? So that leaves only one house at 1800 or less. So as home prices go up, you're going to see rental prices go up with it. The difference, the big difference is that you're not paying down any equity. So you can talk about how challenging the market is. And I agree. I was a buyer too back in May. I was hoping it remained stagnant, at least for the couple months that I was looking to buy there. Um, You know, but the alternative is to rent. And when you rent, you're literally throwing that money right out the door. You're paying somebody else's rent down. So Bill, great question. But yes, as rental prices go up, the the two correlate. As housing prices go up, rental prices go up. As rental prices go up, housing prices go up. The two are always going to correlate. And if you see a difference, an investor is going to jump on that and they're going to make some money off of that. And that's going to pull the market back up. So great question, Mr. Rosen. I appreciate it. Lizette, I'll let you finish. Uh, Looking into 2022, any other recommendations you would give specifically the buyers that you're working with when they come to making a decision on whether or not they're going to buy let's sit down let's have a conversation and let's sit down talk to your lender as well and let's do the numbers and really see what your options are and if the market does continue to increase and interest rates also increase take a look at the picture and say are you going to be in a better situation then than you are now purchasing now and i could probably tell you the answer is probably no you're probably in a better situation purchasing now so have the conversation Mm -hmm. get your ducks in a row and just don't wait for a crash to happen that may not occur um, cause you may be setting yourself up for a really big mortgage payment. <laughs> yes. I'll end with this too. For all you guys who are not W2, do you got your own business going on? If you plan on buying and you are renting, well, it doesn't matter if you're renting right now. If you plan on buying and you made 200 grand and you claim 190 grand in expenses, when you go to the lender <laughs> to get approved, that means you made 10 grand. So just realize that. When it comes to running your expenses, I had to take the hit last year and decrease my expenses so I could increase my net income and get approved for a home. But it's something you need to do with planning. Not a lot of people do it. They'll call me in June. They want to purchase a home. And I say, okay, let's take a look at what you made. Oh, you made seven grand last year and 13 the year before. That's rough. And they're like, no, I made 250. Wow, yeah, but you claimed a lot of expenses. Yeah, but those expenses. So just be careful with that. Make sure you sit down with your accountant. You sit down with a lender. And you plan for that. Lizette, I wish you the absolute best in 2022. I'm excited, man. It's going to be a great year. All right. Have a good one, guys. Have a great one.